skies and azure water. Today on At Your Leisure, we are going to be finding out about a great lake here in the state of Utah, a secret gem down in the swell. From water to land, Steve Human goes on a 4x4 trip in the Red Rocks of the Southwest. And in celebration of Independence Day, we're going to be following some veterans that returned to World War II. Stay with us. At Your Leisure is setting sail your direction right now. I'm Chad Booth. Welcome to At Your Leisure. I'm with Rhea Rossi today, and we are out a watercrafting. We are at Huntington State Park in Emory County, and this beautiful park has got everything. It's got water, it's got trails, you can go fishing, you can go hunting, you can do it all. This is something you can do. Come out and try your hand at watercraft. Also, remember though, if you bring your kids, they need to complete a, a safety training course before they can actually pilot one of these. It's a really good idea even for grown-ups to go through it. But, but if you run them safely, they are a lot of fun. Huntington Reservoir uh, is a little bit shallower than the other two lakes in Emory County. And so it, well, in another couple weeks, it will probably be almost 80 degrees if it's not close to it now. This is where my kids love to go because it's so warm and they can play in it all day. We have three fantastic lakes. There's many more that you can fish from. Uh, we have the mountains just right there, but you can go from the mountains right into the desert, you know, that fast. We have some great four-wheeler trails on the mountains. If you've been out to the Wedge, uh, some fantastic mountain biking trails up by Joe's Valley, we have the bouldering. Uh, the rock climbing, so there's just a lot to do in Emory County. So we have two golf courses, uh, one at Millsite Reservoir, uh, so it's right on the lake, uh, so you can enjoy both of those aspects. And then we also have the golf course down in Green River. Green River uh, is a favorite for the winter because it's a uh, mild winter down there, uh, so you can golf almost year round down there. There's a lot to, to just do on a little lake like this, particularly when you've got a couple of swift and nimble watercraft. We haven't really shown you how much fun renting these craft can be, but I think it's about time to fix that. Insane. No holds barred. She's crazy. Three 360s in less than three seconds. Can you do it? She's got more guts, but I think I've got more skill. Not only is this just for, you know, personal watercraft, this little lake is perfect. It's intimate, it's small, it's just beautiful. Well, right now we're gonna leave the water. We're gonna go see what Steve Human's up to. Steve, where are you? The sky is a deep blue. The temperatures hover in the low 70s. A rumble is heard in the quiet of Elephant Hill as a group of 4x4s make their way northwest. The path is rugged and worn, a trail of broken rock that has conquered more than one explorer, both on foot and behind the wheel. Today, there are some first-timers on the trip, but most are veterans of this rambunctious ride in the Needles area of Canyonlands National Park. This trail, which is the Elephant Hill Trail, is, is our family's favorite trail. And uh, we actually help lead it in the Easter Jeep Safari. I really enjoy it. it is, you know, I come back, I've been back and, and, and done this trail so many times that I've memorized almost every rock. And, and it's always a new experience, every time. Years ago, our family used to come out here. We'd hike all over the place. Everywhere we, you know, every one of these trails has uh, hiking trails, besides Jeep trails. And so, as we hiked all these trails, and they take all day, and we noticed that the Jeeps were going through here in air conditioned comfort, and it was amazing to us. And so, we decided, boy, the next, the next vehicle we're going to get is a Jeep. 
And this is the very first trail that we went on with our uh, little YJ, and it was crazy. It was nuts because we didn't know what we were doing. For Marlon Sharp, longtime 4x4 owner and supporter, today's trip is as much about memory as it is the techniques of getting up the inclines of this daunting trek. Elephant Hill is the most difficult trail in the needle section of Canyonlands off of Utah Highway 191. For years, this has been the holy grail of 4x4 trails in this corner of the West since it marries extreme challenges with beauty that cannot be described. Plus, Elephant Hill is unique in one other way as well. One thing that's neat about this particular trail is it is in a national park, which is very rare because most national parks don't have four-wheel drive trails. I know there's pressure on eliminating some of the Jeep trails, and that's a big concern because they, they have been, been around for a long, long time. In fact, they were around before the national parks were here. Today's group is enjoying the current open access in every way possible. Part of what makes this trip so memorable isn't just the twisting of your axle on the many pitfalls. No, Elephant Hill is just as much about the hiking and we descend into slot canyons and scramble over rocks as the kids oftentimes lead the way into the unknown with broad smiles on their faces. From here we hike up to one of the most impressive outlooks in the country. The confluence of the Green and Colorado Rivers easily identifiable by the distinct colors of the two massive flows as they merge on their road south. Gazing down at the view, it's hard not to be awed by a sense of majesty and appreciation. Thankful not only for the wonder of the moment, but the opportunity it affords with those to whom we are closest. Such is the case with Brett and Matt Davis. They've been on this road many times before, but each trip, everything changes. Not in the journey itself, but in their journey as father and son. It's kind of fun for me because for the last few years, I've been letting him take the wheel on a lot of, oh, most outings, you know. we just get halfway in or partway in and we'd switch places and, and then he would drive. It's a hobby that I enjoy too, so I admire that he's let me do it and uh, taught me so much about it. He just, he knows so much more than I do, you know. He's uh, Are you, You're taping this. No, hey, yeah. let's keep that on the DL. <laughs> He's like my escape route. When I get stuck or something, call him, so. The actual trip along Elephant Hill today is similar to what we've experienced on prior trips here, but at the same time, it's completely different. That's the thing about off-road adventure in general. You may have explored a trail a dozen times, but each excursion offers a new moment with family and friends that opens up a completely unknown facet to the area, the surroundings, everything, and somehow makes it that moment different than all the others. It's the beauty of the destination, for sure, the difficulty of the trail, but equally, the people we greet along the way. Part of the fun for me is helping other people. I enjoy that, and when you're, you know, when you're tailgunning, you're spotting, or if someone's broken, you're helping them, and all those things. So you have some responsibilities there, and you know, with a, with a group of friends like we have today, you know, it's just more relaxing. Always something new that's different. And, and exciting, and I never get tired of it. It's always just, just a blast. And that is exactly what we've had today. And Marlon has helped us get through Elephant Hill safe and sound. Now, if you want to come out here for yourself, it's really easy to find off of Highway 191, just north of Monticello. You'll find the turnoff to Canyonlands National Park. Stay on that for about 34 miles and follow the signs to Elephant Hill. There is a park entrance fee, so you're going to want to keep that in mind. And while there is plenty of camping, there is no water. So you're going to want to bring everything you need with you. Well, I'm Stephen Human for At Your Leisure. We need to take a commercial break. When we come back, we'll have this week's product review. Hey folks, RJ Bailey for Stedman's Recreation. You know when it comes to your next purchase on an ATV or road bike, you don't have to have the blues. Come on out to Stedman's where they treat you like family. You'll get the best prices, the best service, and you'll have a friend for life where they got a full lineup of Polaris, Yamaha, and Honda. When you come out to Stedman's, you're not dealing with just salesmen, you're dealing with family. And when you come out here, they'll make you feel like family. Stedman's Recreation. People might tell you it's 300 miles out here, but remember, it's really only 30 miles back.
Razor, Ranger, Sportsman, Ace. There's a Polaris to match your passion. Confident, comfortable, capable, that's Ace. With a solo cockpit, automotive controls, independent suspension, all-wheel drive, and up to 45 horses of fuel-injected power, calling it revolutionary would be an understatement. Oh, welcome back to At Your Leisure. We got a really cool product review today. It's the new Polaris 900. Now for 2015, they've gone to several different models. This is the base 900 in the 50 inch wide trail version. So it's a really cool machine. Come on, let's take it for a quick spin. On a scale of one to 10 on the fun meter, this is definitely a nine. The 900 has so much power that, you know, when you're pulling a long, hard hill, you actually have to put it in four-wheel drive because the rear end's going all over the place because it's got so much juice. So it's really a lot of fun to drive. I was a little concerned about only being 50-inch wide, maybe being a little tippy, but I found it's very responsive, and the, the shocks and all that do a great job. It felt very stable the whole time. So, I mean, this is really a great machine for you to get out and try someday. Now it may look like I just ran myself over with the machine, but really what I wanted to do is get under here and take a good close look of what they've done. First thing I notice is there's a skid plate all the way front to back encompassing the whole machine, standard from the factory. Also you can easily see the independent front suspension on it with the double A arms, fully adjustable shocks, and disc brakes on both wheels. That also has this knockout so you can put your winch up here or get on your front bumper or whatever else you need. Now you may not be able to notice this, but this is a 50 inch wide razor. So that means you can take it on any of the trails that are 50 inch or wider. And it, it really is, you can hardly tell uh, by looking at the machine because there's so much room in it. Here in the back you can see you've got the double A arm, rear suspension, fully adjustable. You know, go over just about anything. You've got a small receiver hitch with good tie downs. But one of the things I really like is it's got a large compartment back here to bring all your, your stuff. And it also has this large engine cover so that it's very easy to get in, check your air filter. If you need to add oil or whatever you need to do on the motor, you can see it's really easy to get to. And one of the things we noticed on the machine is all of these little brackets and holes and just they're all over the place. And what they are for, for all the added options that you can put on the machine. There must be a book at three inches thick of all the things that you can add to this machine. But one of the things that comes standard on it are the doors. And they're these hard doors with a quick release latch on them. They work really well, super strong. For a base machine to come with nice doors like that and no nets is a real bonus. Now the 900 does come with the knockouts for the floor. So if you come in here with your pressure washer and clean all the mud out and it's got big holes, that uh, you just pop those plugs out of it and you can run out, get all the mud out of it. They're beefing up these seats a little bit better. The bolster is really high on it. They're very comfortable. And another thing that you've done for 2014 is that you have to use your seat belt now, otherwise you won't get full horsepower. It restricts your horsepower until you're seat belted in. Now what you need to do is get into Triple S Polaris in either Cedar City or Roy and check out these new 900s because they come in three different models, and you have different suspensions, you have different powers, all kinds of different things that you can get on the machine. Well, I'm Darren Kinder, we'll see you next time. Tucked away just outside of Cedar City, Utah, are two of Southern Utah's best kept secrets, Canaraville Falls and Kolob Canyons. The rare scenic views create beautiful backdrops to capture the perfect selfie. Get your selfie to Canaraville Falls or Kolob Canyons and get in on one of Utah's best kept secrets. Go to visitcedarcity.com and access your adventure. 
The road of summer is fleeting. It's time to get your family out exploring. And Ray City RV is making it easy for you to do with our Pioneer sale. Get amazing deals like this brand new 2016 Cyclone 3010 Toy Hauler. Pioneer priced at only $49,995. Hey, that's only $406 per month. You won't find a price like that anywhere in the country. Our stock is limited, so come in and see us on Riverdale Road in Roy and start your family's journey through summer. It's Ray City RV's July Pioneer Sale going on now through the end of the month. It's all new from the ground up. New rack system, new LED headlights and taillights, new chassis, and new improved ergonomics. Introducing the all new Arctic Cat ATVs. Filthy, clean, fun. back to At Your Leisure at Huntington State Park on Huntington Reservoir. As, as they say classically in the, old, uh, in the old rhymes from Alice in Wonderland, I'm walking on the shingle, that little line between the water and the beach, which brings us to a big topic about Huntington. Hi, Jonathan, how are you? I'm doing great, thank you. We're standing here with Jonathan Hunt, who is the park manager at Huntington. And Jonathan, this is a beautiful beach we have here. Oh yeah, for a nice warm day like today, it's a perfect place to be. And the waters are known to be really warm in this reservoir, aren't they? Oh, you bet. You know, right now we're having right around 70 degrees. It'll warm up a little bit more than that, but that's a perfect place to be. It really is. And you can do other things out here besides, uh, you know, swimming and things like that. There's a lot of hunters that come out here and hunt, don't they? Correct. We've got a developed campground here with 25 reservable sites. People come in the springtime, people come in the fall. The hunters love it. It's a good base camp to then head up on the mountain in the fall. And they go up in those canyons up there. Correct. We've got three main canyons here in Emory County that within 15, 20 minutes you can be up high elevation. and. Have a time of your life. So there's a lot of things you can do out here besides swim on the beach. So people can bring their campers, their uh, their ATVs out here, close proximity to the San Rafael Swell. So beautiful place to camp and then use it as a destination to, to head other places. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever close? You know, we, we, we kind of close. The lake does freeze in the winter time, but we leave our restroom facilities open so ice fishermen can come out. Mm -hmm. So technically, the park is open year-round, but you know we do get cold, so winter time's a little different. Well, now we got to move away from the water. Take a look at this. There is a mysterious cycle in human events. To some generations, much is given. Of other generations, much is expected. This generation of Americans has a rendezvous with destiny. Those words, spoken by Franklin D. Roosevelt in 1936, stand as a precursor to the actions of countless men and women who served in World War II. For veteran Bob Blegan, the words are a reminder of his naval service, both at Normandy and in the Pacific, during those days of strife and death. There were days, you know, when, when we'd be up on top of the whole world and look out forever, and the next minute, you're at the bottom of this thing, and you look around and there's water all around you. I was ordered to take command of an LCI. I had never handled such a ship. That LCI, or Landing Craft Infantry, became Bob's home throughout the war. It was a home that in fact helped define the experience for thousands of soldiers during World War II. You hear about the awesome aircraft carriers and the silent submarines and the dashing destroyers, but you don't hear about the LCI. Yet if you read a lot of the history books, the invasions were predicated on the number of landing craft that they had. And that was the case on D-Day, when the Allies stormed Normandy Beach. Bob's LCI hit the sand the evening of the first day. After the, the beach had settled down, we would go in on a high tide with a load, dry out. The water wouldn't run completely out there. We'd be sitting on dry land, 
trucks would come alongside and up the ramp, unload us, and this is bulk cargo now, and go off, and we'd wait for the next high tide and go out and pick another ship. The average age of the crew, it was a, kind of a skeleton crew by then, was 20 years old. That's the average. The average age of the officers was 22. If you were 25 year old, you were probably called the old man. In the decades since the end of the Second World War, technologies have evolved and changed, and the LCIs have become a footnote in the history books. Now, one group is trying to change that. They're trying to create a floating museum out of one of the only landing craft left in existence. This is LCI 713. At the end of World War II, there was 3,000 amphibious forces ships, which is what we have. And of those 3,000, there are only two that are on the National Historic Registry. So we either use what was in the blueprint or we use what's in photographs or interior photographs. We want to be this, we want to make this as authentic as possible. Today, Bob has traveled from Salt Lake City to Swan Island in Portland, Oregon to put that authenticity to the test alongside fellow veterans who served on LCLs. It's been 70 years since any of these men have set foot on a landing craft and the memories flood back as they share their stories of service and the men they lost on the beaches of another time. For most visitors, LCI 713 is a piece of American history. For these men, it's a piece of their personal history. It's the best day I've had in probably almost 70 years. It's been a long time and this was a great treat. And the people I've met, are very, very interesting and rewarding to me. I completely broke down in tears. That was my reaction. I don't know why, but I just wept <laughs> just to see an LCI. LCI 713 is open to the public by appointment, and the museum is looking to improve the experience while keeping the boat floating. As an entirely volunteer organization, the Amphibious Forces Memorial Museum looks to the public for financial help to keep this piece of history alive. It needs a new, uh, dry, a major dry docking and some hull repair work to the tune of about a million dollars. Donations can be made at amphibiousforces.org. As our veteran friends look back on their service in the days of the greatest generation, they also look to the future and how their sacrifice, their rendezvous with destiny, continues to resonate today. Even after everything they accomplished for the nation and the world, they still feel that they are far from the last great American generation. I hear a lot of these people, they couldn't do it, but we did. They would do it if they had to. I think the American kids today, some of them are awfully sharp. They're sort of like the army mule. They did a job that nobody else could do. If we don't learn our lessons from World War II, we're gonna be right back into another world war again. And and, and that's what we're all about. We're about teaching some of those lessons. You know, maybe a small piece of it, but it's a very important piece. Roosevelt called them to greatness. History dictated their course. Now all of us can take part in their legacy, so long as we remember the lessons of their sacrifice. From Swan Island, I'm Terry Wood. Play 18 holes of golf, paddle or troll, then set up the perfect campsite at Palisade Reservoir, this week's featured Utah State Park. This venue offers something for everyone from its Desert Canyon golf course, full RV hookups, and tent camping to access for off-highway vehicle riding in nearby Six Mile Canyon. Summer recreation includes camping, fishing, swimming, electric motor and non-motorized boating, golfing, and hiking. The 18-hole golf course has some of the best putting greens in the state. With six campgrounds along with day use areas and interpretive hikes, you and your family can experience Central Utah in an entirely new way. Palisade is located off Highway 89, just a few miles south of Mantuck. Utah State Parks, adventures for everyone. A mountainside trail. A day of speed that pushes your limits. A desert oasis that opens your horizons. A land of horsepower for every taste. Tooele County is all of them in one. 
It's time to experience a new adventure you never knew you were missing. It's time to find out what's just over the mountain. Tooele County, Utah. The Wasatch Front is your home. Tooele is your backyard. Introducing the new Can-Am Spider F3. With a cruising riding position and the most advanced vehicle stability system in the industry, you'll ride with a feeling of complete freedom and confidence. Visit your Can-Am Spider dealer and test drive one today. The new Spider F3. Riding has evolved. Welcome back to At Your Leisure. We are here at Huntington State Park. Probably one of the coolest features here is the trampoline. Now, if you want a swim dock that's a little more tame, it's just right over there yonder, about a, what, an Olympic pool lap away? Yeah, I'd say so. Okay, but this is the place to hang. These kids are really ingenious. They got the boom box hanging in the cooler off the end. They got tunes going on out here. It's really a great deal of fun. Now, this is the part of the show where we got business to do. It's worth mentioning. Juab County Fair down there in uh, Nephi, Utah at the fairgrounds. Big demolition derby. Rumor has it. We are going to enter. We are? Are you gonna drive? No, I'm gonna let you drive because I've not. seen how you are on the highway. <laughs> and we also have the UBIC in Roosevelt, Utah. That's the Uinta Basin in Celebration. That's going on July 30th through August 1st. And that's gonna be a lot of fun, bring the kids, the family. It's like a big old carnival and there'll be a parade. And that's just something you definitely wanna check out. Well, we gotta get on to next week's show, but I know that these are really antsy kids behind us. So, are you, ready, are you ready to jump? Let's see yeah. how it Woo, let's jump! Come on, let's do Woo. something. <laughs> We're exploring the trails of the West in one week as Chad and Rhea set their sights on the small Utah town of Nephi and discover trails they never knew existed. Then come with me, Stephen Human, as I head out of Wolf Creek Pass, but instead of hitting the pavement, I'm exploring the dirt in this beautiful area. Own the outdoors next week on AYL. Well, Chad, next week's show looks stellar. It does, or it's certainly ship shape at least. <laughs> Indeed. Last pieces of business for the show and for you. Whenever you finish boating on a Utah lake, let's get on top of quagga mussels. Go get your boat decontaminated before you leave the park. Get a seal on it so that when you go boating next time, you can get right into the water. Exactly, and you don't have to pay for this. This is just part of the fee of when you come in, so there's no charge for this. Right, take advantage of it, because quagga mussels are a serious problem, and they could ruin boating in this state permanently if we don't stay on top of it. So every time, every time when you're done, get your boat decontaminated, whether it's yours or rental or whatever. Or your skis or anything that hits the water. That's right. That's our tip for the day. You want dinner. I do, always. <laughs> <laughs> all right, between now and the next time we all get together, make sure that you decontaminate, get out with your family and friends, enjoy the great outdoors at, at your, your leisure. leisure. Hey, can I get a quick warm shower over here? <laughs> all right. <laughs> oh, no. Thanks, Steve, for that great story. <laughs> Isn't Chad supposed to say something now? I didn't hear, I didn't hear you. Hey guys, if you like that video, you're gonna to wanna to watch all of our other AYL videos. You're gonna to wanna to like it, you're gonna to wanna to share it, and you're gonna to wanna to subscribe, right? See all the buttons right here? <laughs> this is what you're gonna to wanna to do, click, right? Click, click, click. on them, because we have some really cool videos, all kinds of behind the scenes stuff, bloopers of Alicia crashing and stuff. Why are you gonna sell me out like that, Steven? <laughs> so you wanna click all of these things and subscribe to our channel, because At Your Leisure is awesome, and uh, we'll see you here for more videos.